Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. Uh, I'm with and at the uh, University of Ottawa. And um, in this video, um, I wish to talk about some uh, uh, modern uh, data. So ongoing, uh, what I call ongoing abrupt climate change uh, that's happening uh, and has already been initiated today. So in the last video, I talked about the uh, Southern Ocean being the gateway to the global deep ocean, you know, and having an enormous uh, influence on uh, or control over glacial, interglacial uh, climate changes. Um, but the, uh, the key factor as far as humanity is concerned is the uh, Southern Ocean uh, control of the Antarctic uh, ice sheet uh, melting rates and thus uh, sea level rise. Um, data, um, data today shows that there's already a slowing of Antarctic, Antarctica bottom water formation. Um, so specifically um, in the Weddell Sea, the uh, ventilation, so the uh, deep water formation from the surface has reduced by 15 to 21 percent in both the Weddell, for both the Weddell Sea bottom water and the Weddell Sea deep water. And this is over between 1984 and uh, 2008. Um, another significant change is that uh, you know, often there would be warm water, often in the, in the deep uh, Antarctica winter when the sea ice was forming, there would be warm water coming up, melting through the uh, sea ice, creating large polinas. And uh, these polinas would um, raise the air temperature um, by tens of degrees, and uh, you'd have this open water region. It would, be, it would be like a conduit or a funnel of allowing heat to escape from the ocean up to the atmosphere. Um, this uh, used to occur fairly commonly, but in the last uh, few decades um, it, is, it has been rare to never occurring in recent decades. And when it does happen, the polinas are much smaller. So this extra heat is clearly staying uh, deep down in the ocean. Um, also, um, the circumpolar water that circulates around the continent of Antarctica has actually been warming. And uh, this is likely due to um, there's been uh, increased ice shelf melt, uh, more stratification, so the warm water is staying uh, deeper as the water column freshens. Um, also, um, you know, it's clear that the ocean depths with the largest warming are at that one to two kilometer depth, um, which are where the ice um, shelves are grounded on the uh, bedrock. Also, uh, ice core data near Antarctica um, has been studied to show what happened during the deglacial evolution after the last glacial maximum, which peaked at about 21,000 years ago. Um, so in these ocean cores, you know, the ocean sediment cores near Antarctica, um, they showed that there were eight episodes of very large iceberg flux um, as we left the uh, last glacial. The largest uh, one occurred 14,600 years ago, and uh, we call it uh, Meltwater Pulse 1A. And it was a period where the sea level rose an average of three to five meters per century for um, a few centuries. Um, so, but of course, you know, as we left the last ice age, there was more ice. Um, so the ice sheets today, one could argue that they may not be as vulnerable as during the last ice age. However, the forcings from CO2 and from, uh, you know, and the temperature rise, the rates of change are much more rapid, at least in order of magnitude, more rapid now. So heat's being pumped into the ocean at a high rate. Um, the energy, the planetary energy imbalance is much higher. So there's plenty of heat going in there, which can spur any um, ice melt. Um, so, um, and so basically, um, also the, um, because the water at the surface is fresher um, than in the winter, in the southern hemisphere winter, it will freeze at 
zero degrees Celsius um, if it's fresh water as opposed to minus 1.8 degrees um, if it's at uh, salinity of 35 uh, PSU, which is typical in the ocean. So uh, this is another reason why the uh, seasonal sea ice is growing in Antarctica. Um, so there's changes that are underway now. Um, we have seen um, ocean surface cooling um, emerging near Antarctica. Um, and uh, we know that the uh, southern annular mode, the winds um, which drive around from west to east around Antarctica have been strengthening. And one of the reasons this is attributed to, you know, variably to increased greenhouse gases or uh, the ozone hole, uh, but that's decreasing in size. Um, what is likely the main reason is um, I've been saying for a while that there's more heat going to the southern hemisphere, which causes a larger pressure gradient and higher winds for the SAM, uh, but also there's um, freshwater input, there's freshwater injection um, into that region, um, and that's not modeled correctly. Um, so the models um, uh, do not uh, account do not uh, uh, account for the the uh, increase of seasonal sea ice in the southern hemisphere. Also the uh, proportion of calving versus uh, basal melt producing that fresh water produces it in different locations. If it's calving, the icebergs can travel a long distance before melting, carrying the fresh water further from the continent of Antarctica. Whereas uh, if it's basal melt, it's being produced a couple kilometers deep where, where, where it's uh, melting from. And I mentioned that a 0.1 degree temperature rise um, at the basal location can cause an extra meter of ice to melt per year. Um, also, um, in the northern hemisphere, uh, we've noticed a, uh, both in the model and observation, show a global warming hole called it near the southern tip of Greenland. So an area of where the sea surface temperature is low, anomalously low, anomalously anomalously low, which can be a precursor of a weakening AMOC. So the AMOC is slowing down if the Gulf Stream is not traveling as far north and is moving more west to east, and that will be a region of higher of sea surface temperature anomalies being positive, and where it used to go, the, the sea surface temperature anomalies will be negative. So we're seeing that sort of thing happening as well um, today in the Northern Hemisphere. So. The fundamental question um, of the Hansen et al. paper, you know, um, is, you know, is, is this process of melting sea ice going to be linear and nonlinear? And if you look at the last um, few decades, um, it's clear that the doubling rates are increasing. And this is why the um, estimations of when, um, you know, uh, 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 this is why the climate estimates and the models are always behind the eight ball. You know, they come out with a prediction and within a few years the doubling rate has changed so they have to come out with a new prediction. So you can look at these doubling rates and a 10-year doubling rate would require only 50 years to get multi-meter uh, sea level rise. Um, and the IPCC model, of course, is, you know, it looks at the linear uh, case, the conservative case, and and uh, they estimate that uh, up to 0.74 sea, sea level, meter sea level rise in 2100, uh, likely range 0.52 to 0.98 meters. But they also look at semi-empirical estimates that yield 0.7 to 1.5 meters, but they discount those. Those are for the RCP 8.5 uh, scenario. So, um, but if you look, you know, you look at this, there's, there's no reason, there's no rational reason to assume a linear rise in ice melt or sea level rise, especially since we're, we're not, we haven't seen it over the last 20 years. Um, and we have good evidence, good reason to believe that it is a nonlinear process. The big factor being the retrograde slope in Antarctica. Perhaps uh, the rate will not be nonlinear, will slow down in Greenland, but if the Arctic sea ice goes, um, I can't see that happening, even though most of these slopes are prograde from um, Greenland. So, um, in terms of um, regions of the Antarctica that are at risk, uh, the Amundsen Sea glaciers um, 
are a gateway to West Antarctic ice loss uh, with the potential of several meters of sea level rise from there alone. Um, the Totem Glacier in East Antarctica fronts this region called the Aurora Subglacial Basin, which has the potential for 6.7 meters of uh, sea level rise. So ice mass loss at Greenland, West Antarctic, and the Totem Aurora Basin in East Antarctic are growing non-linear with doubling times of the order of 10 years. Now the order of 10 years, I mean, if you look at the numbers in the last few years, I see numbers even with doubling times uh, 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 lower than 10 years, you know, seven years even. Um, so um, basically, um, you just have to look at the evidence and, uh, you know, it will really change how people, um, uh, you know, it will really change, um, well, I've said already that the trajectory that, that we're heading on, business as usual, um, will lead to, you know, massive uh, sea level rise. So the Hansen et al. paper has a lot of evidence showing that. Uh, so I'll finish here and uh, I'll just do one more uh, final uh, concluding video. So thank you.